Uh, notices for this the fifth Sunday after Easter. Um, dear friends of St Anne's, thank you for all your prayers and support and generosity and all our efforts to bring you the Holy Mass online via the St Anne's YouTube channel is encouraging. Uh, our channel has grown over the past month and has over 200 subscribers as of today. Your continued support for St Anne's and prayers are always appreciated. The day's Mass will be online first thing in the morning for you. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel for Masses and Sermons, which we hope will be helpful to our parishioners, friends and benefactors, who are all remembered in the daily Mass and devotions. Now please note that this sermon is different to the one emailed out with the bulletin. So this sermon, the YouTube sermon, is different to the one emailed out with the bulletin. Uh, on that point, uh, if you haven't already done so, please also enrol online to receive St Anne's bulletin, uh, not only to read the sermon, but also, as you would know, uh, government regulations change tomorrow on Monday the 18th of May, and St Anne's Church will be uh, open again. So Masses will be taking place. Um, we'll still be doing the online Mass as well. That will still be available each morning as well. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the Regation Days, and we'll particularly have the prayers in times of the plague as well. So please note that. Uh, for further information about the church being opened and mass times and so forth, uh, please check the St Anne's Bulletin and if you haven't already done so, please enrol online to get the bulletin. Uh, Thursday, of course, is the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord. So uh, please take home, uh, please get a copy of the bulletin and please read it and read the sermon as well. I will now read out the Epistle and Gospel for today, the fifth Sunday after Easter. A reading from the Epistle of Blessed James the Apostle. Dearly beloved, act on this revelation. If you only listen to it, you are fooling yourselves. For man who listens to divine revelation but does not put it into practice is like a man who looks in a mirror at the face he was born with. He looks at himself, and then he goes off and promptly forgets how he appeared. But then there is the man who peers into the ideal law that is characterised by freedom, and he does so continually. He is no longer a forgetful listener, but he puts all things into practice. Happy will this man be in his accomplishment. Then there is the case of a man whose tongue is not controlled. He imagines himself that he is devout, but this is self-deception. That man's worship is pointless, looking after orphans and widows in their distress, keeping oneself unspotted by this world. This is pure and stainless worship before our God and Father. And today the Gospel is a reading from the Gospel of St John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I assure you, whatever you ask the Father, he will give you in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be complete. I have said all this to you in figures of speech. An hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in figures, but will tell you plainly about the Father. On that day you will ask in my name, and this does not mean that I shall have to petition the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you, since you have loved me, and believe that I came forth from God. I came forth from the Father, and I have come into the world. Now I am leaving the world, and I am going to the Father. Why at last his disciples exclaimed, you are talking plainly without any figure of speech. Now we know that you know everything. No need for anyone to ask you questions. And because of this, we believe 
that ye come forth from Almighty God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. We hear in the epistle today, religion clean and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their tribulation, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world, from the epistle of St James. As we know, uh, we uh, recently celebrated 100 years of Fatima, and one might say, with the things going on in the world, that perhaps uh, what Fatima said about Russia spreading her errors throughout the world is certainly something that seems to be happening. It is also, apart from that, almost 100 years after Fatima, it is over 500 years since the Protestant Reformation and Martin Luther's spit, split from Holy Mother the Church. Not something at all to celebrate. Now, St James' Epistle, I mentioned this, is one of those books that Martin Luther removed from the Bible when he left the church. Luther, of course, had the mistaken idea that faith was all that was needed for salvation, justification by faith alone, a Protestant heresy. St James was very clear that in addition to having faith, God demanded practical behaviour from us. For example, helping the poor and keeping the Ten Commandments. The Apostle St James then knew that faith was belief in what God has revealed to us, a belief that is essential to being a Christian, but which falls short if it ignores the revelations that our Lord gave us. For example, in St John's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 15, our Lord said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Elsewhere in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, 25, Amen, I say to you, as long as you did it not, feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, and so forth, to one of the least, neither did you do it unto me. And these shall go into everlasting punishment. Now Luther's faith was not so much the belief in God's revelation, it was a presumptuous form of hope that if he wished hard enough and emotionally enough, God would make up for all his shortcomings and that his eternal salvation would be assured without further effort on his part. Luther was indeed so presumptuous that he is quoted as saying, Be a sinner and sin mightily, but more mightily believe and rejoice in Christ. So said Martin Luther. And with an attitude like that, it is not surprising that he wanted to remove the book of St James from the Bible, and indeed Martin Luther did. This morning we read from the first chapter of the epistle. If you go and read the second chapter, which you might do after this sermon, you will get St James' message even more to the point. It says in the second chapter, so faith also, if it have not works, is dead in itself. But some man will say, There hast thou faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without works, and I will show thee by works my faith. Thou believest that there is but one God, thou dost well. But the devils also believe and tremble. Now, Luther's theology, of course, was born out of despair. He couldn't imagine that fallen men and women could do anything good to merit eternal happiness with God. Now, the opposite of despair, then, is presumption. He presumed that God would do everything. He failed to understand the work of sanctifying grace. What does the church mean by sanctifying grace? Well, before the fall of Adam and Eve, the good things they did were pleasing to God and deemed meritorious in his sight. 
we say that Adam and Eve were created in the state of original justice. But if God recognised their good works as being radically good and meritorious, he likewise had to recognise their failing as radically evil and blameworthy. When we talk then about original sin, we are talking about a sin which deprived Adam and Eve of original justice. For after the fall, Adam and Eve lost this grace of radical holiness, both for themselves and their descendants. And they couldn't pass on to their heirs and offspring what they had foolishly tossed away. So it took the sacrificial death of our Lord on the cross to restore mankind to a state where holiness was once again possible. Under the dispensation of Jesus Christ, men and women are once again capable of justification, receiving the sanctifying grace needed to become radically holy and pleasing to a mighty God. Now Martin Luther then confused salvation with justification. And be aware that in modern times that even a few Catholic authors have adopted this error. It goes along fairly well with the heresy that all men and women will be saved, the touchy-feely notion that one day the fires of hell will go out and we will all be eternally happy. This error of universal salvation was condemned by the Council of Constantinople in AD 543. So it would be good to perhaps look that up in your Catholic encyclopedia. We then must believe in the teachings of the Gospels. As our Lord said, He that he believes and is baptised shall be saved. He that believes not shall be condemned. St Mark chapter 16. And those who have read the Gospels then and therefore have learned the importance of keeping the commandments and helping the less fortunate by good works, will not make Luther's mistake then of expecting a brief moment of presumption to guarantee eternal life. Belief in the gospel, of course, justifies a person, making his good actions pleasing to God and giving him the opportunity to merit eternal life. But in a normal human life, there may be many years between justification and salvation. And indeed, the individual soul may lose its justification, just as Adam and Eve did by committing serious sin. That is why, of course, our Lord gave his priests the power to forgive sins, so that justification or sanctifying grace could be restored through sacramental confession. See the Council of Trent, session, chapter, uh, session 6, chapter 4, 13th of January, 1547, under Pope Paul III. Now, baptism then can be rightly called the sacrament of faith, for the adult who has come to believe the gospel publicly professes his belief by receiving baptism, or at least by desiring to receive the sacrament. Council of Trent, Session 6. In extreme cases, people known as martyrs, of course, a Greek word for witness, have been known to demonstrate their belief by their willingness to die for the faith. Hopefully none of us will need to die in order to profess the faith, although all of us should be ready to do so. And who knows what comes in the years ahead. But we must reflect then on the words of St James today. Religion clean and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their tribulation and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.